Hello, this is Jackie. Uh, this is the upstairs at Westcote Bell Pottery where I paint the hand-painted pieces. And uh, today I'm going to paint a rounded bowl, the kind that I paint upside down, and then an open form bowl that I paint right side up. Uh, I've gone through them yesterday, so um, I'll just get started. Okay, so this is Jackie, and first thing I'm going to do today is um, I'm going to paint a couple bowls, and I'm going to start by coating the inside of this bowl here with some yellow slip. This bowl is going to be painted on the outside, but the inside needs um, a coat of color first. paper cut a stencil here. This is going to be a whale. I've just got a small whale drawn on here and I'm just going to cut this out. I always cut these out of news newspaper or telephone book. This is telephone book paper. Actually, telephone book paper is better, generally. Okay, so this is just a whale shape. And I've got the island shapes already cut out. Um, some things that either might be sun or moon, birds, and, and cats. So I'll just uh, see what I'm going to do on these bowls and I'll have some stencils all ready to go. This is a Duncan cover coat. Two different kinds of green. Oops. Want that to come off. And this is all I will do to the inside of this bowl because the the imagery is going to be on the outside. Just going to let that um, set up a little bit before turning the bowl over. This is the open form bowl, which I'm also going to coat with yellow slip on the inside. This is where the image on this bowl is going to be on the uh, inside. Okay, so this is the first bowl with the swirl of um, yellow slip and then some underglaze over top. The underglazes were Duncan cover coats, 
a turquoise, and the other one was a spring green from Mako, actually. So what I'm going to do now is take this bowl carefully and reverse it onto this bat so that I can paint it upside down. There we go. And the first thing I'm going to do here is put yellow slip on it. I'm just going to, I'm going to hold off doing it here because I can feel that it's still pretty damp. Okay, so this is the open format bowl. It has yellow, a coating of yellow slip on the inside. And the first thing I'm going to do next is I'm just going to paint some, um, a sort of a, another coat of underglazes with some, some bright warm colors, just almost random, but with a view to the idea that I'm going to be putting um, cat stencils like this on the inside and some birds. So there'll be some white. I'll be using some white because I want at least part of the cats to be white. And at this point, I just um, I'm kind of doing things a little bit more freely as far as color. Um, I have a palette here that uh, kind of using. I'm just spreading some color. I like it to be a little bit loose and not get too hung up on where it is. So this is, these are un yellow underglazes and they're going over the yellow slip. A little bit of liver there. Um, But I'm also going to introduce some other color there. Because there will be other elements in this image. You know, there'll be trees or there'll be sky. And um, the color is richer if there's more than just a single you. I'm even going to put some, some green in here. Just in a few spots. I am going to make sure because in the end, I want the cats to stand out, the stenciled cats to stand out. So I am going to get a lot of white area in here, too. I'm going to have to let this uh, dry up some before doing any stenciling. I'm just adding a few more colors to this um, open format bowl.
These are Duncan cover coats. want the cats to be able to stand out because I'm kind of thinking in terms of having a landscape behind the cats. So I want to make sure that I use some colors uh, for the cats that will they'll stand out. They won't be pure white, they'll be sort of yellowy whites, some variation. Another thing that I like to do is to um, use a bit of speckled color. In areas too, this is just a stenciling, it's called a Deerfoot brush. I like to add a bit of speckling color and it kind of gives the, this enlivens the surface, makes the color, colors pop out a bit. Um, sometimes I even use kind of a, maybe even use a little bit of lavender in here. So, in a minute or so, that'll be ready to stencil. Okay, we're back to the open format bowl and I'm going to uh, start the stenciling. The first thing I do is spray the stencils down with a little bit of water, spray bottle. and lay the stencil in the bowl. Try and get it without any creases. Okay, and then I've got three bird stencils here and I'm going to just wet them down and place them and then I will go over them with some underglaze to seal the edges. Okay, 
and in the very bottom I'm just going to put a few little fish stencils. It's a good idea to count how many stencils you put down somewhere because once you get underglaze over, sometimes they can be hard to find. Um, so it's a good thing to know, like everything in this image is, is all threes, three cats, three birds, three fish, so that, that's easy to remember. Um, it's a very simple, simple image. But sometimes when things get more complex, it's harder to find them. Okay, so my next step, got the stencils down, is to put in the background colors. And I'll use a big brush like this because I'm just going to put in some big broad areas. It's a nice big brush. And once again, I'm going to be a bit random about the whole thing. I think I'm going to add some tree stencils in here. And so I'm going to block in a darker color. This is a purple brown mix. Once again, I'm spraying the stencil and laying it down. And this is a tree, so it's got some little branches coming off that are a bit fussier to put down. down a bit better.
and I've got a palette. I use the palette to work the colors up so that they're a little bit more paintable. mixing some colors here. just want to get a different kind of green. And I'm going to, supporting the outside, this, these bowls I have to be careful because um, I don't want them to collapse when they're getting a lot of underglaze put on them. to finish blocking in the other areas like the pond down in the bottom. I'm going to use a darker blue. Blocking the sky in kind of loose. So other colors will, will show through. And I may tighten that up later on or, or not. And then I'm going to make this hill, this grassy green area where the cats are running. I'm going to darken it up with a darker green. As opposed to the brush, it gives a much more opaque, layer of color. Okay, I'm going to continue with the sponging um, just to get uh, some more defined areas. Here I'm using my palette over here to load the sponge up with some color. And I think just in this sky area, I'm just going to sponge some color. I'm going to leave some of the edges free so that the color just doesn't look too overly tight. Sometimes those areas where there's a bit of color poking through more defined areas kind of uh, gives it a glow. So we'll see what happens. Let me take the stencils off.
And I'm also going to um, do a bit of spattering out over some of this too. Because I think this glue needs a bit warming up. which is uh, translucent. And I'm just going to um, put a few wafts of it in here and there because I've got a lot of cooler colors. some kind of poke through of warmer areas. Okay, so I'm gonna let that set up before taking the stencils off. Okay. So this is the bowl that I'm going to paint on the outside. I've just put a little bit of yellow slip on the, the center panel there where eventually I'll put Westcote Bell Pottery and, and, and sign it. But right now I'm just going to put some uh, color down with underglaze. And I'm just, at this point, just doing it in a very um, free sort of way. Um, Okay, it's time to take the stencils off. And I've got a scalpel, exacto knife here. I'm going to try and do is come it at, in at an angle and lift up an edge and uh, try and get as much off in one go as I can. Probably had some leakage here and there. Okay, 
So this was the tree stencil that was, I put three trees on last. So let's see, I'm trying to get a good angle on this so you can see what I'm doing. What about that? Will that work? A little bit of a poke mark there. I try not to do that. If you put stencils on when the underglaze is really wet, you can get sort of like smudgy textural marks. If you try and put the stencils on when the underglaze is too dry, you can have trouble with the stencil staying on there without leaking. So you're kind of trying to always go for this sweet spot where things are damp without being wet. Now there's a little bit of a leakage spot, but that's no big deal. I can just dab a uh, bit of purple over that and it'll go away. Or maybe it will end up be having some kind of leaf painted over it. I, I'll just see what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to look for the tail of a cat or something. Let's see if I can do this so that you can see better. Okay. So here we go. I got the tail of the cat. I know the cat's coming off. There we go. find another cat tail. This is what I was saying about, um, you know, if you do a, a, a design that is more complex or more, eh, you know, not so symmetrical as the one I've been doing here, sometimes you can have trouble finding your stencil again. So here I'm, but this one's, this one's easy because it's three, three, and three, and it's all in the round, and there's nothing really complicated about it. It's just trying to get the the light to show up the um, outline. I think this might be the tail. Yes. Okay. There's the the third cat. Okay, so these cat stencils came out pretty clean, nice sharp edge, little tiny, teeny leak there, no big deal. Um, and so now I'm going to go for the birds. Where did I put the birds? The birds are kind of uh, underneath the trees. They're in so the bird will look like it's flying in front of the tree because the bird went down first. So the tree becomes the background. And there we go. What I'm, I'm searching for from getting some raking light from my window and then I can see the edge of the stencil come in at an angle so they're not like putting a great big hole in there. I mean, you can always fix things, but there we go. Okay. Oh, I forgot. I got the fish down here. There we go. One fish. Second fish, and there's one more. You can see him down there. I think I can anyway. Whoops. So I had that the wrong way. So I have a couple little marks there, but I can, I'll just fill that in with some of the, the 
the blue that I used. So that's not a problem. So all the stencils are off. And at this point, um, this is the point where I go back into the image and I'll, I'm going to start putting faces on the cats and maybe leaves on the trees. I'm going to put something, maybe a few clouds in the sky, grass here, and I'm gonna go back into the detail. But first I will check on my other bowl and see how that's doing. Right, we're back to the uh, inverted bowl now and it's time to put the stencils on. So the first thing I'm going to do is put the stencils down that will be the islands. So I've got some stencils that are cut out the shape of an island. You can see some little houses here. Um, this is an island that has um, a lighthouse shape. So I'm going to put those down. Obviously I've got to work upside down. So I wet the stencil again, as always, so it's nice and soft. And um, what I do is I just put them over the random areas of color, and then I worry about what I'm going to do with the details when I pull the stencils off, because I like to get, um, I like the variety and the surprise of just putting something down and then going with it. So, and then I use well, some of the same colors to seal up that stencil. Some of these longer stencils do have a tendency to, because they're going over a surface, you might get a few buckles, but usually when, in, when the detailing part of the painting, I'm kind of correcting any of those anyway, so I don't worry about it too much, but I try and get it as good as I can. So I've got a few islands that I need to put in here. This one will go here. So I have to kind of Oh, sort of think about the kind of space. Now, sometimes what I do is if a stencil looks like it's going to have trouble wrapping around, I cut a little bit of a dart into it. You know, like when you're sewing. And see that? little cut that I made is right there and it's just helping the stencil wrap around. Um, probably should have done that with this one, but it's okay. So those two islands are close together. And island that's going to go right here. Yes. I think I will make a little dart in this one too, just in case. Once again, I'm closing up the stencil by painting around it. And obviously, this kind of creates another layer of color. So the next thing I'm going to do is put in the whale shapes, which are going to be along the bottom. going to be mostly surrounded by um, dark blues. So 
There's two whale stencils down there. Quite a bit of area to decorate on a bowl like this. I got room for one more wheel. Yes. Okay, so the other thing that's part of this image are a, a few small boats in the water. So I've already cut out some small boat shapes. I'm going to place them In and around, let me see where's a good spot here. I want them to seem kind of small in comparison with the with the whales. So there's three bo boats, so I've counted those for when I'm having to find them later. One, and then two, and number three. Okay, well, I think that's all I'm going to do there. Other details will be painted in. So I have a couple of small circles here and I think I'm going to put this one in as a sun in the sky. Just going to okay. Okay, so that's it for the stenciling. Next step is to do block in all the background colors. So the first thing I'm gonna do is establish the water with some blues. preserving that red right at the rim here and right at the bottom there. So I'm kind of watching that as I uh, block in some of these colors. There'll be a lot of blue here because the islands are pretty far up towards the top. think water is ever a sort of uniform blue, so I just put in different kinds and I'm going to mix in some purple. This 
so that the water has a lot of different colors in it, not just blue-blue. getting kind of wet so I think I will put in some area towards the sky and then let it sit just for a few minutes because I don't want this bowl to get too, too wet. So, while I'm waiting for the other bowl to set up so that I can take the stencils off, I'll start doing a bit of the detail work on the open form bowl. Um, I mix uh, my underglazes right on a palette, just like I would if I was painting with gouache or acrylic or watercolor. So I think I'm going to put some Before I take the stencils off, I'm just going to put a few indications of waves in the water area here with a brush called a rake.
that whale just by the tail area and pull it off. So there we go. So now is the time when I go back into all the stencils and into the different areas and add detail. And I think the first one that I'll work on is the one that's a bit of a problem area because of the red and the red. The first thing I'm going to do is put some green in here where I had some... Uh, tree shapes cut out of the stencil. shape of a building here which I'm going to change the color I'll be putting windows and doors on these buildings as well. Sometimes it's a question of just laying the underglaze in there rather than like brushing, brushing. put an area that feels like that sort of rocky walls
Okay, I've been just adding some more detail. It's uh, still got a ways to go yet, though. Been putting a little bit more white uh, under the islands for to look like water waves ashore. Um, let's see more detail in the island parts. But there's still I still have a ways to go yet.